So yesterday we were working on the plates, uh, sliding together, pulling apart, sliding past each other. Um, and today we want to look at our results and try to generalize what we found out. So we're going to take a look at six charts. Uh, this is the first one here. We're going to take a look at six charts. I'll show you how they're different uh, from each other. And then we'll make one new chart. And then we're going to do a CER uh, explaining why what might be happening with Mount Everest based on what we found out here. So first of all, we've got six posters. So this is continental versus continental. We had another group that also did it. They might have had different results. We're going to take a look at theirs. We have two oceanic and continentals. And then we end up with two oceanics. Okay, so we got six posters to look at. Uh, we're not going to look at every single thing. Um, so what we did in class was we looked at where they're going towards each other, and we looked at each one. Uh, so here we see that the two plates got pushed up. If we look at another one, we saw the same thing again. And sometimes they just, uh, one end went up here. If we look at another thing with different types of crust, again, they get pushed up. Another one we have kind of getting pushed up also. Again, we see it being pushed up. These are bending, but being pushed up. So we kind of see the same thing happening uh, each time there. And each class group was a little different. They saw different things. So we're kind of just taking a look at just one class group's papers here. Uh, if we look at how they're pulling apart, uh, we find that in all the cases, no matter what kind of crust we had, oceanic or continental, uh, water just ends up being in the middle. So again, here's they're pulling apart, and there's just water in here pulling apart water in the middle, maybe a little vibrations in the waves of the water, uh, filled space with water. So you can see there's a pattern here uh, being pulled apart. Um, here's some waves again here. Okay, so we've got different things going on there. Uh, we go to the last one, uh, which was plates sliding past each other. Um, so we have, it looks like it's, they're kind of getting stuck together. They're scraping the sides. Uh, it looks like some shaking. It looks like they're trying to show us some shaking lines there as it's going by. They vibrated on the sides. They grinded together. Feels rough on both sides water ripples, there's some small cracks in between. So we just made observations. We went through the whole class. We just kind of made observations. Based on whatever your class group had, so we looked at the six posters for each class group, uh, we ended up making a chart that showed what we found out. And that's this one here. And we gave uh, each thing a model number. So if the two plates went up, uh, we gave it a number. In this case, for this class group, it was model number one. That's the first one they came up with. Uh, there was one class group that had both going down, so we called it number two. We had one where one piece of foam stayed flat, the other one bent, so we called that three. We had some times where one plate would over the top of the other one. Uh, we had plates sliding past each other and then plates pulling apart from each other. So the one we're looking at here, we have six different things happened with the plates, with the pieces of foam. And then we looked at where does this happen? Uh, so model number one only happens when plates are uh, colliding together. Uh, this model number two only happened in the continental continental crust when plates were going towards each other. Uh, this one where it bent only happened with oceanic and continental crust only when they were going together. Uh, one plate going on top of the other one happened in all the groups where they were converging, uh, where they were coming together where we had sliding plates past each other. It only happened in all the examples where we had plates sliding past each other, which would be kind of obvious. And then the only time it pulled apart was the only ones where we pulled them apart. And we kind of gave a quick, quick description of what was going on. So this one we said uh, both plates were being moved upward. This one we said both plates were being pushed down. This one we said the softer plate, because this was a black piece of foam, the softer plate bent, the other one did not. Uh, this one we said one type of crust overlapped the other. 
this one we had vibrations and grinding and shaking as they were sliding past each other. And finally, for the last one, the plates were moving away and water filled the gap in the middle here. So that's the chart we came up with to just kind of generalize what we found out through all the groups, uh, no matter what happened with the, the type of crust. So based on that, uh, we look at a, a question and a claim and evidence and reasoning now. So we're going to do a CER. So this is a CER here, and I'm going to kind of walk you through this. Uh, this document is in the attachments, and you can watch uh, this video, look at the charts uh, really slowly, and you know, kind of look at them in detail to help you answer what we have here. So I'm going to kind of just walk you how to do this. So the claim here um, is, why do we think Mount Everest is moving the way it is? Now remember, it's doing two things. So this is not your answer. I'm just giving you some facts. Uh, so. Uh, either Mount Everest is moving upward about two centimeters per year or it's moving about four centimeters per year uh, northeast. So now what, what I want you to do is pick one of those. So I don't care which one you pick, but pick one of those that you want to talk about its movement, whether it's going up or going across. And what you're going to do then for your answer, you're going to put, I think um, model number, so model whatever, and you're going to use that from the diagram in the last one. So the one where I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think models number whatever explains why Mount Everest is moving blank. And the blank here is you got to pick whether you wanted to go talk about how it was going up or how Mount Everest was moving off to the side. So you pick out which one you want. So you pick this or this. So can you pick A or B? And then you're going to say, I think model number, and that's from the ones I showed you in that one chart where we had all the activities. So you pick out the number, and then you either say, uh, is moving up if you're talking about A or it's moving across if you want to talk about B. That's all you have to do there. It's just one sentence. The next thing is why do you think that this model that you picked helps explain what Mount Everest is doing, whichever one you picked there. So if you picked it's going across, why did the model that you picked help you explain it? So let me go back to the, the diagram here for one second. So here is where you have your model numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you think number six explains why Mount Everest is growing two centimeters a year, your claim would be, I think model number six explains why Mount Everest is moving up. And that's your claim. Your reasoning would be, why does that help explain it? Why, when you watch the videos uh, from the previous day, and looking at this chart, why does this model help explain it? Now, I'm not saying this is the right answer. I'm just giving you an example. Uh, so why would this model help explain it? If you think it's number four, that's great. If you think this helps explain why it's getting uh, Mount Everest is growing higher, perfect. Whichever one you want to pick, as long as it sounds like it would answer the question why it's growing. Now, if you think it's you want to do the one where it's moving across, you find the model here that would explain why Mount Everest is moving four centimeters a year northeast. So for going back to our, diag or our CER, so then over here you're going to explain why you picked that. So this is not your answer, I'm just writing down what you got to be kind of working, uh, thinking about here. Why did you pick the model you did? How does that explain the motion that you're trying to explain? Okay. So that's what this is what's in your head. This is your thinking here. You're not going to find this anywhere. This is all in your head. You're, you're trying to explain what's going on. The bottom part is the evidence. 
So the evidence can come back to here. We know Mount Everest is going up two centimeters per year. We know it's moving four centimeters to the uh, northeast every year. We know what happens in our lab exercises. So we know this is evidence. This is what happened when we did those models with the foam. So this is evidence. So what evidence from here? What can you say about what happened here? And the fact that it's going up or east, northeast? Like, what are you trying to use to help you support your idea and your thinking here? So what pieces of evidence or what facts helped you to explain? Okay. So I know this could be a little tricky. Uh, sometimes if you can pick out the answer up here, you already know the answer is down here. Your brain has picked an answer. Now you gotta kind of slow down your thinking and find out what was I thinking and what facts did I use to work on that. So um, I'm gonna put this blank form in the attachments and then when you're filled out this portion here and you've done your best that you think you can, uh, submit that. And that's all we did in class today was just looking at the models and doing the CER.